NASA representatives disagreed. NASA Administrator James Webb brought out the big guns. Scott Carpenter and John Glenn had just been in space. They were America's greatest heroes, and their opinions carried enormous influence. Glenn testified that civilian flying is not the same as being a jet test pilot. He also pointed out that women were fighting more than regulations. The fact, Glenn stated, that women are not in this field is a fact of our social order. Ms. Cobb, you argue today that women would make better astronauts in some respects than men. Do you really believe this is true? Uh, this has been proved by doctors and scientists in certain areas. Of course, it's very obvious that women weigh less and require less food and oxygen. So in some areas, women would be better. In other areas, men. I don't think one outweighs the other. Both equally would make good astronauts. Perhaps the most pivotal moment in the hearings came with the testimony of Jackie Cochran. Cochran was traveling in Europe at the time and submitted her statements in writing. And she wrote letters that said this. I believe this is a wonderful program. I am as eager as the next to go into space. Yet I know that that's not in the national interest. That you can't have a separate test program going on right now. You can't have a separate training program. You can't teach these women to be jet test pilots and get a program going. You put the whole space program back. And that's silly. We're trying to beat the Soviets, not slow down the American program. The women were stunned. Jackie Cochran had funded the tests in the first place. People thought, this is the woman who led the WASPs during World War II. How could she testify against this? That was extremely powerful testimony. You can't deny the power of that. And it didn't matter that Janie Hart had the clout to get a hearing. Jackie Cochran had the clout to end the ambitions of the women in this program. Jackie Cochran did not abandon the ladies. She just knew when she was licked. And she was up against the bureaucratic walls in Washington and she understood without any question that this was not the time and this was not the place and it was going to have to be relegated to the future and she accepted that. It wasn't that people intended to discriminate against women. They never thought about it in the first place. It hadn't occurred to them to test women. But when it was presented, it was extremely inconvenient. It was a bad time. The Washington bureaucracy had kept the status quo. And the 13 women had lost their chance to become astronauts. It was just, uh, you know, it was just one of those things, that's the way things are. I was terribly disappointed. I was, uh, you know, I had my hopes up that I was going to get riding that thing. I didn't really understand what, uh, what had caused the cancellation, so, uh, you know, I really couldn't lay any blame. And uh, then as time went on, it was obviously dead. And uh, so there was nothing further to do. Cobb didn't give up. She inundated the NASA director with letters explaining why the program should continue. Her pleas even reached the White House, but to no avail. For Cobb and the other women, the race to space was over. A year after they ended their would-be astronaut careers in disappointment, a woman finally did fly in space. But she wasn't an American, and she wasn't even a pilot. On June 16, 1963, the Russians beat the United States again. A Soviet cosmonaut named Valentina Tereshkova became the first woman in space. The 26-year-old Russian wasn't even a pilot. She was a textile factory worker. Tereshkova spent three days in space, at that point more time than all six American Mercury flights combined. It would take another 20 years before an American woman would travel in space.
Two decades later, the United States finally matched the Russians. On June 18, 1983, Dr. Sally Ride, a mission specialist flying aboard the space shuttle Challenger, became the first American woman to fly in space. In October 1984, Kathy Sullivan became the first American woman to walk in space. She too was a mission specialist. To date, 28 American female astronauts have flown on the shuttle. I do remember thinking, this is my first flight, you know, please don't let me screw up. But I remember that launch time went very quickly. The external tank is jettisoned. What do we do now? Where are the computers? Um, you know, when do I get out of my seat? I've flown on the space shuttle four times. The first time is very exciting because you don't quite know what to expect. You go from being excited about being there to being focused on your timeline and then maybe being very hesitant to go to sleep because that's really where your free time is and wanting to stay up late and, and take in the beautiful view of our planet. Seeing this lone orb suspended in the darkness from the vantage point of orbit is almost surreal. Women astronauts share the thrills as well as the risks of spaceflight. Two of the seven crew members who died in the Challenger disaster in 1986 were women. In 1996, Shannon Lucid broke the record for the longest time spent in space aboard the Russian space station Mir. The requirements to be a pilot in the space program remain the same as they were when the Mercury 7 were selected back in 1959. All of the pilots for the shuttle must be military and they must be jet test pilots. If you want to drive the space shuttle, if you want to be at the top of the rocket, you have to have had jet flying experience, and again, as a test pilot. Today, unlike 1959, women can be military test pilots and have them the chance of becoming a space pilot. I don't know if I ever wondered if I had the right stuff or not. I've wanted to be an astronaut uh, ever since I was 11. And I think that because I was given the permission from my parents to say that I could do anything I wanted to do and that there were no limits, I really didn't worry too much about it. And so everything just sort of progressed. I mean, obviously, the timing was right for me. Uh, it, it might not have been, but it, it was. The pioneering pair who started women on their journey into space never lived to see it come to pass. Jackie Cochran, the famed aviator and record setter, died in 1980. Randy Loveless, the daring doctor that started the whole program, perished in a private plane crash in 1965. Some of the original 13 women astronaut candidates still live the dream that got them thinking above the clouds. After the congressional hearings in 1962, Jerry Cobb went to Brazil where to this day she flies medicine and food to the people of the Amazon. Now 75, Kay Cagle is a retired aircraft mechanic but still finds a way to get her hands dirty at the propeller maintenance shop at Robbins Air Force Base in Georgia. Whenever she can, Kegel returns to her first love. It sure does feel good to be part of big things. Aviation is one of the biggest things happening. And I like being a, a part of it in whatever role. Irene Leverton went on to establish the Women's Air Pylon Racing Association in 1965. She's 71, and in her 50 years of flying, she has tallied more than 24,000 hours in the air and continues to share her love of flight. I think, how could I sleep at night if I wasn't flying? I just, how do you disconnect? You know, hasn't everyone had something they wanted to do 